Hello and welcome back. In this module, we're going to talk about Amazon Guard Duty. So we'll go over what is Guard Duty, then we'll talk about different ways to use Guard Duty, and then we'll look at a use case. So, Guard Duty is a continuous security monitoring service that analyzes and processes the VPC flow logs, CloudTrail management event logs, and CloudTrail S3 data event logs, and DNS log data sources. And it takes that information and uses it to analyze the resources and services that are in use in your account. It uses threat intelligence feeds, such as lists of malicious IP addresses and domains, as well as machine learning to identify unexpected and potentially unauthorized and malicious activity within your AWS environment. So it's a managed threat detection service that continuously monitors for malicious or unauthorized behavior to help protect your account and your workloads. And when you enable it, it begins monitoring for anomalous API activity, potentially unauthorized deployments and compromised instances, EC2 instances, and reconnaissance by attackers. Examples include issues such as privilege escalation. So when someone unauthorized escalates privilege for a given user, use of exposed credentials. So if you accidentally exposed a key pair and then it was used, communication with malicious IP addresses and domains. So those are some examples of what will be tracked and reported on by guard duty. Also, Guard Duty can detect compromised EC2 instances for things such as mining Bitcoin or performing DDoS network attacks. And it monitors AWS account access behavior for signs of compromise, such as unauthorized infrastructure deployments. For example, instances deployed to a new region that you've never used before, or unusual API calls that are out of the norm for your regular activity in your account. And for example, a password policy change to simplify password strength. That would be an API call that would be suspect and that guard duty would call out in its report. And it reports the status by producing security findings viewable in the guard duty console or through the Amazon CloudWatch events. One of the features of Guard Duty is Guard Duty S3 protection. It's quite often used, and you will find questions on this on the exam. So, S3 protection in Guard Duty enables Guard Duty to monitor object level API operations, identifying potential security risks for data in S3 buckets. And we show here an example screenshot from when you configure S3 protection in Guard Duty. It monitors threats to S3 resources by analyzing CloudTrail management events and CloudTrail S3 data events for you. And these data sources, the CloudTrail management events and CloudTrail S3 data events, they monitor activity. The CloudTrail management events for S3 include operations that list or configure S3 buckets, such as list buckets, delete buckets, and put bucket replication. So it's going to monitor for use of those API calls. And example data events for S3 are object level API operations such as get object, list objects, delete object, and put object. So between the CloudTrail management monitoring for the list buckets, delete buckets, and put bucket replication, and the data events for S3 monitoring for get object, list objects, delete object, and put object, you've got very nice coverage of your S3 buckets and any malicious activity that might be happening there. Guard duty monitoring of CloudTrail management events is enabled by default for accounts that have guard duty and is not configurable. So you're going to get CloudTrail management events enabled by default. S3 data event logs are a configurable data source in Guard Duty. So you, as you can see in our screenshot here, you have to enable S3 data event logs. 
it's not enabled by default. Remember that for the exam. All right, let's talk about a guard duty use case. So here we have a six step use case that I'll take you through. And the idea behind this use case is we're going to visualize through Kibana and Elasticsearch the guard duty findings in your account. And when you visualize your guard duty findings, you can generate meaningful insights and you can create a dashboard that includes visualizations. And this is an example of creating a pipeline for guard duty findings so you can log and visualize your guard duty findings. You'll see that we log our findings in our S3 bucket and we visualize them through Elasticsearch and Kibana. Okay, so let's go through the steps of this use case. Okay, in step number one, guard duty is enabled in an account and begins monitoring CloudTrail logs, VPC flow logs, and DNS query logs, as we've said. If a threat is detected, guard duty forwards a finding to CloudWatch events. That's step number one. And then in step number two, we define two targets in our CloudWatch events rule. The first target is a Kinesis Firehose stream for delivery into an Elasticsearch domain and an S3 bucket. So we can see how we deliver from CloudWatch event into Kinesis Firehose and into SNS. So the second target is an SNS topic for email slash SMS notification of findings. So we send all findings to our targets. However, you could augment this use case and you could filter and format the findings you send by using a Lambda function. For example, you could send only high severity items. In other words, findings with a detail severity greater than seven. All right, and then in step number three, the Firehose stream delivers findings to an Elasticsearch domain, which provides visualization and analysis for the event findings. The stream also delivers findings to an S3 bucket. You can see that we're splitting out between Elasticsearch and S3. The S3 bucket is used for long-term archiving. This data can augment our data lake, so we could put it into our data lake, and you can use services such as Athena to perform advanced analytics on that data in your S3 bucket. And then in step number four, we can search, explore, and visualize the guard duty findings using Kibana and the Elasticsearch query domain specific language, or DSL, to gain valuable insights. And Elasticsearch has a built-in Kibana plugin to visualize the data and perform operational analysis. So Kibana and Elasticsearch work very well together to provide very nice dashboards. And that's gonna be used here in this scenario to produce dashboards of our guard duty findings. And then in step number five, we provide a secure authentication method with user authentication to Kibana with Cognito user pools, something we learned about in a previous module. And then finally, in step number six, our second CloudWatch event target is SNS, which has subscribed email endpoints that allow an operations team of users to receive emails or SMS messages when a new guard duty event is received. So you can see here, this is a very nice use case of how to use guard duty to produce insights using Kibana and Elasticsearch in a dashboard and also sending out alerts to key resources when significant security events are detected by guard duty and then also by storing our guard duty data in S3 so that we can use it in our data lake to do ad hoc querying maybe with Athena. So remember this scenario because this is a great illustration of how guard duty can work within a larger architecture using several other services. Firehose, Elasticsearch, Kibana, SNS, CloudWatch, S3, Cognito. It gives you a good view into how to integrate guard duty into your architecture. All right, in our next module, we will do a guard duty lab. So if you have the time, please join me for that next lecture. Thank you. 
For more details check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success Certified.